Good morning, Lincoln Mitchell here. Um, I have decided to add two more things to my arsenal, which would be 6C and 6B. I had looked at 6A, it just wasn't moving long, uh, strong enough so, for me. So now I'm going to add these two. Now, one of the first things I do when I do bracket orders is I want to know how much these every tick going to cost me. So for 6B, I know every tick is going to cost me $6.25 per contract. I know for 6C it's going to be $5 and that's right in my ballpark. That's that's where I can feel like I'm comfortable with just in case it pulls back so far then you know I can kind of really you know I, I won't get nervous put it that way. I don't know why that tick value is not showing up on that one right there. It was $10. I'm almost certain it is. I don't know why it's not showing Okay there you go. Okay uh, let me where was that 6B? Well, that was 6C, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, let me put this back because I, I haven't chopped up the chart yet. So I need to go back and chop up the chart. All right, so we got that done. Now, so $6. Now, that's going to determine how far my limit orders and my, I mean, my bracket orders are going to be. So on both of them, I'm going to set them to both. Now, my best advice to y'all is when you're setting bracket orders, set them up where when you can glance at them, you know what's going on. Let me cancel this. Set them up so like me. When I look at this, I automatically know this bracket order is 32 ticks. I automatically know this one is 36 ticks. I automatically know if uh, I have this one on, that means there's no break even. And most of them are now no break even anyway. But some of them I have that are they're, they're break even. This one might be a break even. Let me see. Okay. No, it's not. I turned off all the break even. But what I used to do, I used to have um, break evens on all of them. Where's Yes, and I'm going to show you what I mean. This one probably has a lot of them on there. Nope. I got one of them on here. got a lot of them on here. Uh, let's see. I'd like to give you all an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, this one's a great one. See, I got all these are different things. This one is more of a, a long day. That's why I got tree. This one is more like I'm just going to intraday trade it. And this one is more like I'm going to be in it four or five seconds, four or five minutes, and I'm out of that trade. So I got all these type of bracket orders. So when I just glance at my screen, and my bracket orders are on like this one, I automatically know what I'm doing. I automatically know. What I don't want to happen is ha ever have them off. I cannot stand having them off. I love I, all my trades are bracket orders. I do not enter the market without a bracket order. Some people don't like using bracket orders, and, and I can totally agree with them, especially when I was with 4X. When I was with 4X, every time I clicked that damn bracket order, it seemed like it went straight to that damn stop loss. So let's get these bracket orders done. Both of these I'm going to do the exact same way. So this one, I, I feel comfortable. I'm going to name it 36 because that means 36 ticks. So you do the math, 36 ticks times $6 is roughly about $200. It's, it's, it's less than that, but you know what I mean. So 36 times, I think it was $625, am I right? So that's $225. If I lose that trade, that's a, to me, 36 ticks is long enough to let me know that, hey, that, that, that trade might be in trouble. Now... I'm going I'm to match everything here. 36. 36. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to turn the break even on anymore. I used to do it all the time. On this particular one, I'm not going to set it that way. I know that as long as it stays where it's at 36, I can move it up and I can move it down. So that one's set. We good to go. Now, this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see what happened? See, I didn't set it. <laughs> 36, 6. Hold on, did I just set this thing twice? See, I got one already. 36. 36 is good enough for me. Okay, let's do this one again. And one thing I have to be real cautious about, since I have run all domes on this page, I got to be real cautious about when I set things not to touch that back page because it will fill me in orders. And I have lost so many trades that way that I accidentally went into it. I need to change my setup, but I like I love my setup the way it is, and I want to keep it like that. So both of these are all going to be thirty six. So this one would be I think one of these is five dollars. So thirty six times five, one of them be one hundred and eighty dollar pullback, and the other one be two hundred and twenty five dollar pullback. And that's kind of where I want to stay. I'm only running a six thousand dollar account, so I don't want to too much go over that five percent which is three hundred dollars in a day i try to stay underneath that and um 
to me because it just makes me feel comfortable. Three hundred dollars I can make up in a day. Once you start getting in trades that's over five or six hundred dollars, then you kind of you you you're kind of pushing that budget at ten percent of your account. And trust me, man, those things mess with your mind. So now that one looks good. Set and I always keep mine on ticks. Uh, these are the settings: take profit and stop loss. You can change them. You want to stop loss only or take profit only? Do you want it done by ticks or price or currency? I like mine done by ticks. Do now this is for the stop. If you turn on the stop, I'm sorry, not that one. Oh, let me get to that. <clears throat> if you turn on the stop loss, it'll tell you whether you want a trailer stop. So far, I don't ever use trailer stops. There's nothing wrong with them. I just don't use them. I'm a little bit more price action guy, so I kind of know what the market should do. So I don't really need it. And I and for me, with, when you deal with trading, trailer stops. Sometimes that market spike down too far, then it goes back up. You out the trade. So I don't. I don't really use use them. But there's nothing wrong with them. I don't use them. Okay. Now break even. A lot of times when I do turn my break even on, <laughs> I let it go at least six ticks. Because remember, when you're trading futures, most futures. You need at least two ticks to know for certain you're in the money. One tick, sometimes you will break even. I think CL Gold and ES is like the only ones you can do one tick in the money. And then, you you know, you're still profitable. But most of them, RTY, you got to watch. Sometimes RTY has a slippage to it and you need at least three ticks. So you got to be real careful with that. You know, so make sure if you do decide to do a profit trigger, and that's basically a break even. When it goes up, you want to know where is it at. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, let me show you how it works. So, if you turn it on, it's going to give you a bracket. Now, this lets you know if it goes up ten, one tick, it's going to break even. It's going to bring you to the, but you will still pay the fees. So, if I was to set this at 10, until it goes 10 ticks up, then the break even will slide up. I have lost a lot of trade, good trades with break even, so I stopped using them for now. So, now we're done. And that's it. All my bracket orders are set. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go with Trade of 8 and set my bracket orders. Lincoln Mitchell. Bye-bye.